Hello, you're watching PC Jack, and welcome to this week's news roundup. This week's CPU release on behalf of Intel can be summed up in only a few words. So much power. Let's go over everything you need to know. So on Wednesday, 19th of October, Intel launched their 13th generation Raptor Lake CPUs, which includes the Core i9-13900K, the Core i7-13700K, and the Core i5-13600K. Most notably, of course, these CPUs have knocked down AMD from the top of the charts, but much like we're seeing with multiple hardware releases, power draw is absolutely through the roof. Looking at the 13900K's power draw, we can see it draws up to 334 watts, which is a hell of a lot of power. This is, of course, helping it maintain that really high boost clock of up to 5.8 GHz, much like what AMD has done with the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. While its performance is certainly impressive and nothing to sniff at, this does come across as Intel brute forcing their way up to the top of the charts in the least graceful way possible. But nonetheless, Intel can claim the top spot, which is great to see when us consumers are looking for the best competition as possible between manufacturers. Where things get real interesting though is the 13600K, which out of the lineup is certainly the most impressive in terms of the value to performance, especially compared to the 7600X. Don't get me wrong, all of 13th gen is a little steep, but compared to AMD, you don't need a new platform as these CPUs are compatible with 600 series motherboards, and you also don't need to have DDR5 memory as Alder Lake and Raptor Lake support both DDR4 and DDR5. Combine these factors and this makes the 13600K a pretty compelling option compared to the 7600X, with great performance and much greater efficiency when specifically compared to the 13900K. So if you're looking to build a gaming only system, the 13600K might be a really compelling option. The 13700K however, while offering even better performance in between the 12600K and the 13900K, actually outperforms the 7700X in some applications, but at lesser efficiency. It seems there's a recurring theme between these flagships across both CPUs and GPUs. Given advancements in node manufacturing and the need to boost and maintain high clock speeds as much as possible, power has been a victim of this and will obviously be a pressing concern for many users. Either way though, it is a great time to be a CPU buyer with so many options on the market. In some cases of course, the investment is much higher, but we all have to monitor the market, especially when it comes to last gen CPUs too. Talking about flagships though, the RTX 4090 is certainly maintaining the spotlight many weeks after release, but for some of the wrong reasons. A Reddit user shared a photo claiming that Newegg had scammed them while purchasing an RTX 4090, and instead placed lead weights in the box, and when he contacted them to inform them, his account was banned. While it seemed like Newegg was slightly on the mend after their feud with Games Nexus, it seems they're back to their old tricks again. It even seems like higher ups that previously met with GN have actually left, which makes this matter even more difficult to investigate with so many management changes. Currently, we're waiting on more coverage regarding this, but for now though, I just wanted to throw this out there for any of my American viewers in case you were considering purchasing any hardware from Newegg currently. Finally, in news that should come as no surprise to anyone, AMD has halted production on their Ryzen 7000 series CPUs due to low demand. Yep, it seems that the high admission to entry for Ryzen 7000, whether it's the CPUs, motherboards, or even DDR5 has had a significant effect on sales, and even to the point that AMD has had to intervene. This is very unfortunate, of course, but AMD must be aware the pricing seems way off, especially on AM5 motherboards. The B650 pricing seems really mixed up and often crosses with X670 pricing, which makes you wonder why would you buy a B650 motherboard when you can get an X670 motherboard for the same price or less? Not only that, but given that we're heading into a recession, these prices seem really awfully timed and in no way capture the market share that AMD has built up over the past couple of years when it comes to their first iteration of Ryzen. For now though, I would advise waiting. Just wait, if you're on the fence and you're hoping to get on Ryzen 7000 series, it seems inevitable at this point that AMD is going to have to cut prices very soon. Otherwise, AMD is going to be faced with some even more difficult decisions moving forward. But for now though, it seems that Intel users are in for a much more value-oriented generation this time. Have I gone to a parallel universe? So, that's it for this week's news roundup. Let us know your thoughts on the topics down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord server. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, then make sure to check out the PCJack Patreon where you can claim exclusive benefits while having the fun everything I do on the channel for you guys. You'll find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.